Over the years, MS Teamworks has shared different perspectives on MS from patients, care partners, family members, and healthcare professionals. Guided by our mantra, I have MS, I have a team, I have a future. We are proud to share new messages of hope and inspiration with the MS community. I have MS. I'm on your team. I have a future. My name is Dr. Alan Bowling. I'm the director of the Neuro Health Institute and also clinical professor of neurology at the University of Colorado and I'm an MS specialist neurologist, but my career has been a little different than just the conventional path uh, in that direction. My career has really been about evidence-based, rigorous approaches to integrative care, which is conventional medicine, but also alternative and lifestyle management, and putting that into a unified picture for each individual living with MS. How I've ended up uh, speaking and writing about cannabis is really kind of a tangent of a tangent of a tangent in my career. My career has really been you know, the big picture about integrative medicine. Within the integrative medicine, there's the alternative medicine piece. Within the alternative medicine piece, there's the cannabis piece. And so for my whole career, I've had an interest in cannabis, especially evidence-based approaches to safety and effectiveness as Cannabis has become more popular and more available and more studies have been done. That part of my career, which used to be one fairly small component, has sort of uh, escalated in size. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about the myth and the facts related to MS and cannabis. For the effectiveness side, there are actually 19 randomized controlled trials. So these are well done trials that involve placebo. And these trials have involved people with MS and looking primarily at muscle stiffness or spasticity and also pain. And the majority of those studies, especially the well conducted studies, have shown benefit for both of those, for muscle stiffness and for pain. There may also be benefit for bladder uh, problems and also sleep. So that data is out there in the literature, and it's been reviewed by me with a group from the American Academy of Neurology, and other large reviews in the medical literature of these roughly 20 studies that have been conducted. So in my career of taking evidence-based approaches to conventional medicine, alternative medicine, lifestyle medicine, to me, this is a once-in-a-career situation where what's actually in the medical literature is so different from the public perception and the public policy, especially in relation to understanding effectiveness, but also safety issues, potential drug interactions, other shortcomings of state-run uh, dispensary-based uh, programs. So I think it's important for people to realize that we do have evidence for cannabis helping muscle stiffness and pain in MS, but those are with standardized research-grade preparations that you can't buy at any dispensary. And then there are hundreds and hundreds of articles outlining potential adverse effects from cannabis use, including addiction. There's about a 9% risk for addiction, psychosis, worsened anxiety, worsened depression, suicidal risk, stroke, heart attack, a testicular cancer, liver injury. And I think that's often, I don't know any state that proactively educates potential users or healthcare providers for what I just mentioned. You don't have to look hard in the medical literature. There are summary articles that go through everything that I uh, just mentioned there. In addition, states don't have an infrastructure like the FDA, so they have to create their own infrastructure. And there are shortcomings to the infrastructure. For example, there are many reports of labels being incorrect in terms of how much THC or CBD is in a product, or maybe there's none. Contamination potential with pesticides, heavy metals, solvents. There are dozens of reports of that. There are microbes, some of which could potentially cause serious infections if someone is immunosuppressed, as can happen with some of our MS medications. The staff who work at dispensaries generally have no scientific training, and there have actually been 
published studies in the medical literature of the shortcomings of the staff that doesn't have appropriate training, yet they're making very specific recommendations. So I just went through a lot of negative concerns there, and it's really not to trash the whole area, it's not in that spirit at all. It's in the spirit of informed decision making, which we do with any medication. There are pluses and minuses. But what I find concerning from a public health perspective and specifically for people with MS is they're not being given the information to make an important treatment decision. And everything I just went through, I share with my patients. I've got a condensed way to share that with my patients, and some of them have used cannabis. It's improved their quality of life to the point that they want to proceed, even knowing what I just said. But to me, that's critical, and that's <clears throat> to have full education about uh, benefits, but also risks, and then to make an informed decision. In terms of uh, patients discussing this with healthcare professionals, I think patients need to realize that many healthcare professionals never got any training in cannabis. Many are not knowledgeable on the topic. There are actually published studies in the medical literature showing that a very small percent, often like less than 10% of healthcare professionals, feel like they're knowledgeable or they're comfortable discussing it. But I think it would be important to bring up the topic. I think very soon health professionals are going to become more educated. Very soon healthcare professionals are going to have access to resources where they can refer uh, people with MS to look for objective information. So in terms of uh, specific information and how people with MS can have this conversation with their healthcare professional, I've actually put together very concise information with uh, appropriate references given that goes through safety, effectiveness, potential drug interactions. And I think that could be a very nice starting point for people with MS to have a conversation with their healthcare professional. On the screen, you can see the link to the website. The link will take you directly to the page. It's not for sale. I don't have anything for sale on my website. It's really just evidence-based information about topics like this that are hard to find evidence-based information about. So people could get that page up. They can print it. They can take it to their healthcare professional and uh, start the conversation there. In terms of positive stories for people with um, MS who I've cared for, uh, I have dozens of people who have had a similar response as has been described in the uh, clinical research on cannabis. So specifically, I have people, typically they have pain and spasticity that sort of feed off each other. They get a little more pain and then they get more stiff and the stiffness worsens the pain and the sort of this vicious cycling that happens. Often these people are on medications I've tried my best with, conventional medications, usually multiple, and we just can't fully contain it. So they get breakthrough of the pain and spasticity in the afternoon or especially at night, at night when they're trying to get to sleep. And so a little bit of cannabis helps those people get through the afternoon or at night it helps relieve the symptoms but also makes them a little sleepy and kind of gets them uh, into a better night's sleep than they would have otherwise. So I have dozens of people in that category of what I just described including a very memorable patient recently who, uh, she's a physical therapist, I sort of call her like a wellness superstar in my practice for 15 to 20 years. She's been kind of the model of optimal MS management, but she does have pain and spasticity. And a recent visit, she came in and she said, I voted against marijuana for medical use and recreational use. I was totally opposed to it, and then I happened to try it at a friend's suggestion, and it has improved the quality of my life and helps the pain and spasticity and just gives me a better sense of well-being. Now, she's someone who has gone through the information I provide, and she knows the risks, she knows the limitations of uh, products bought at dispensaries, and she's decided to move forward in spite of uh, the negatives and the unknowns because she uh, got benefit from it. 
the main uh, thing that I think people should know about cannabis and potentially starting treatment with it is that this is an important decision, that this is a drug and it has potential benefits and it has potential adverse effects that are unknowns about the products are being sold. And I think it's very important for people to take that in, not have a knee-jerk, quick response to it, to really spend time sifting through objective information. I've shared a place you can get that objective information, talk with a healthcare uh, provider about it. What I find often for healthcare providers and for people with MS is often just this quick emotion-based response. Well, that's not good when you're come talking about uh, medical therapy. So you really need to think it through, take it in, really kind of work with it before proceeding. And after doing that, some people may choose to move forward and others not.